Week 7, 2023. It's the fourth quarter Sunday Night Football in Philadelphia. The Dolphins are approaching the red zone. They trail by 7 with 12 minutes and 54 seconds remaining. A high-flying offense like the Dolphins? The score here is expected. But it's all about to fall apart. <laughs> After that, we see the Dolphins have a bad snap. Two is able to team up with Jalen Wall to salvage five yards. But they're still facing third down with eight yards to the sticks. Then, the Dolphins take a deep shot on third and eight. It makes sense. You need to attack downfield regardless. And if you can get your running back open on a wheel route down the sideline, they might not see it coming. But the Eagles did see it coming. By the time the Dolphins got the football back, they were down by 14 points with just under five minutes left. But let's go back to where it all went wrong, because this is a video about Jalen Carter, after all. And we're going to get a better view with the All-22 here. This play was the first time all game that Jalen Carter actually got to tackle Dolphins quarterback Tua Tagovailoa. And it feels wrong that he doesn't get credit for the sack. Not necessarily because of this play, but because of how Carter won the line of scrimmage all night long. The least they could do is credit him with a sack. He earned it. You see, in this game, Jalen Carter put the Dolphins' offensive line into a torture chain. Rewind back to the first quarter. Jalen Carter started the game unblockable, or unblockable to the Dolphins at least. On this first rep, Carter hits a bull swipe that is so vicious, it knocks the left guard flat on his back. It's a good thing that Tua leads the NFL in time to throw. Otherwise, he might not get out of this game alive. Next rep, Carter is taking it to the Dolphins' left guard again. This time, he uses his length and some outrageous lateral depth to sidestep into the gap and get a free run at Tua. Even though Tua gets the ball out for a nice gain, he takes a lick in the process. Now that Carter has established the inside lanes are his for the taking, it's time to establish the outside. The Eagles run a loop here, asking Carter to drive outside to open an opportunity for the edge rusher looping inside. It works, but they didn't need it to, because Carter blows through the outside gap before the Dolphins' right tackle can even react. Tua is too darn fast with getting the ball out, though. A series or two later, Carter's back at it, this time using a swim move to swipe by the Dolphins' left guard and into the backfield. The pressure forces Tua to rip the ball early, leaving it off the mark. Next, we see Carter just use his brute force to clear the way. Ball is long gone by the time he gets free, but that's because Tua got it out just a touch over two seconds after the snap. His average time to throw on the year is 2.3 seconds. Sure makes sacking the quarterback difficult when they get it out that fast. A little later, towards the end of a trick play, Carter takes a free shot at one of Miami's blockers. Blocker didn't appreciate it, so after the whistle, the Miami blocker gets even. Always smart to resolve these things after the whistle, if you ask me. Anyone who lives near Lincoln Financial Field, just be aware of active snipers in the area, because he took quite the fall here. At this point, I think it's safe to say that Carter's in the head of the Dolphins' entire offensive line. They need to make sure they're not getting beat off the snap because he's consistently getting off the football and wrecking their blocks too quickly to operate their offense. All it takes to draw a jump from them is this little leg lift. I was cracking up when I saw that. Eventually, Miami gets a few reps here, but for the most part, Carter dominated this game when he was on the field. He was actually only on the field for 19 snaps, and only 16 of those were passing downs. PFF credited Carter with four pressures in those 16 pass rush opportunities. That's just a ridiculous pressure rate at 25%. But it's really not that far off from a season average either. With 27 pressures on 151 pass rush opportunities so far, it's a pressure rate of nearly 18% across his six games played. Back to football. This play is one I wanted to highlight a little bit more. See, Carter's engaged with four different Dolphins players at one point in this play. That's more than one third of the Dolphins players on the field that Carter is interrupting here in this moment. In an offense that relies heavily on timing, if you include how his presence might be impacting Tua, then he's impacting 5 out of 11 Dolphins players on the field. 
which is just ridiculous. Even though that might not be a pressure or a sack, it's a very positive play in my book. It's a, it's a great example of how defensive linemen can make an impact even when they don't get a pressure or a sack on a play. Now back to where we started. I just wish this was recorded as a sack for Carter. He terrorized this Dolphins line all game long. We got no sacks to show for it. Credit to Tua for quick processing and throwing, but maybe the point here is how overrated sacks can be as a statistic, at least in a game like this. Oh yeah, and just for good measure, Carter got into his face again on the last Dolphins offensive play. What a freaking game wrecker, man. If you like this video, remember to like and subscribe. My name is Quentin Crisco. You can find me over at the Shaving Points Podcast, the Bears on Tap Podcast, and writing for On Tap Sportsnet. And you can find me on Twitter at Buckus Stats. Thanks for watching.